activities to teach boundaries. Sometimes we need to teach our kids boundaries in more ways than one, not just saying it to them and not saying it to them again and again and again, but showing them or playing games with them or reactions that we have. That is what we're going to cover in today's video, activities to teach boundaries. <laughs> Welcome to Be The Change Parenting, where we teach values, self-esteem, and connections. So if that sounds like it's up your alley, then feel free to subscribe. Today, we are talking about activities that we can do with our kids to teach boundaries. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably have a child or two or more who tests the boundaries. You're totally normal. Trust me, kids do that. Kids test boundaries. Now, sometimes you have a child who tests the boundaries even more than others. <laughs> and trust me, I get what that's like. You know, I feel sometimes like I don't want to tell stories about my kids, but you know, I have eight kids, so probably you won't know who I'm talking about. So I do sometimes share stories with my kids. I did have, I do have a child who when um, this child was younger, really tested the boundaries a lot. And I had to come up with a lot of ways and I learned a lot of skills for really enforcing boundaries so that when they push up against them, they feel nice and safe because they know that they can't just push you over. And that way they're very clear on the boundaries. So here we go. I actually did this with a client the other day and it is a very good tool. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want three baskets. Now you can color coordinate them if you want um, or you could just number them, basket number one, number two, number three. If I were to put colors on them, I would make one yellow, one orange, and one red. Not green, because these are baskets that we don't, things that we don't do. Green is generally a color of things, oh, like go, green, go, go ahead, right? So let's make one, basket number one is yellow, which are things that are uncomfortable, things that people don't like, things that we don't like, things that you, know, you shouldn't do it because it's not like people don't like it. That's yellow. Then you get to orange. Orange is don't do this. This is bad. You should not do this. And then there's red, which is if you want to make the middle basket like red because that don't do that and the, the further one like black, <laughs> that's also okay. Whatever, you know, works for you. The idea is that the basket number three is something that is like a world calamity. It's like a world war. It's like something really bad, like someone having to go to the hospital because they were hurt so badly, okay? What we want to teach these children who are having a hard time with what's okay and what's not okay is to teach them the different levels, okay? I've also done this with kids where we make like a pole, like a totem pole of like, this is bad, no, this is uncomfortable, this is bad, this is worse, this is really bad, okay? So for right now, we're gonna try this with three baskets, okay? You've got your yellow basket, you've got your um, orange basket, and you've got your red basket. Now, what you wanna do is, what would you put in these baskets, okay? You could make um, little pictures or you can, you know, write words of something. What would you put in this basket? Okay. You can make this into a game. So it's fun. Siblings can play it. Everyone can play it together. Mommy and daddy can play it. Okay. So for example, let's put on this. We want to come up with ideas of things that are uncomfortable. So let's say someone bossing you around. Someone bossing you around is uncomfortable. People don't like it. So meaning you shouldn't do it to other people. And if someone does it to you, you don't like it, right? So let's put bossing people around into the yellow basket. Now, what about um, cheating on a game? You're playing a game with your sister and you cheat. You look at her cards. Is that like a world calamity? Mm, not really. Is it something bad that somebody could like, you know, go to jail for, mm, not really. Is it uncomfortable? Is it something that people don't like? Is it something that's not so good? Yeah, okay, so that's probably gonna go into the, um, basket number number one, the yellow basket. Now what happens, something like hitting your sister? Hitting your sister, hitting someone, that's gonna be in the absolutely not 
basket, okay? The orange basket, the middle basket. You don't do these things, it's not okay. It's not okay to cheat on a test in school. It's not okay to be disrespectful to a teacher. It's not okay to um, kick someone or hit someone. It's not okay to um, take um, medicines from a bottle, you know, that um, without asking mommy. It's, there's a lot of things that are not okay. So we put those in this basket. Then there's a basket number three, okay? The red basket. That's gonna be things like hitting someone with a metal rod, <laughs> hurting someone, pushing someone off a ledge where they could end up in the hospital or worse, okay? Where someone could die, where someone could, something really bad could happen, okay? So we wanna teach the kids the difference between something that is uncomfortable. For example, um, uh, mommy just cleaned the kitchen or the cleaning lady was just here and now kids come in and they pour milk all over the uh, floor and don't mop it up that is very uncomfortable <laughs> that is really not nice mommies don't like this we should not do that but really it does go into basket the first basket into the yellow basket it's uncomfortable it's not nice but you won't end up in jail for it it's not something that is somebody will die from it right so we're teaching the kids the different levels of what is okay and what's not. Now I'm gonna show you where this comes into play, okay? What happens, tell me this doesn't happen in your house, okay? What happens when one sibling comes running in, okay? Let's call her Molly. Molly comes in that Chris, her brother, um, it could certainly be the opposite way, obviously. Molly comes running in that Chris just hit me. He just, um, he pulled my hair and he punched me in the stomach, okay? Now Chris says, well, she was touching my things, she made a mess of my room, and, um, and she stole my book, <laughs> okay? Now, he, in his mind, it's obvious that it's okay to hit his sister if she did these things to him, okay? So what this does is help you understand that Molly did a bunch of things from basket, the yellow basket, basket number one, okay? Now when basket number one, she did all these things that are uncomfortable. And yes, she probably does need, you know, a talking to from, um, from mommy and maybe she needs a consequence um, or a timeout. And she needs to understand that we don't do things. That makes someone feel upset with you. That makes them angry with you. But we need to teach Chris that as soon as you go do something in basket number two, you are, I would say wronger, but probably not good English. You are more wrong than your sister because what you did was in basket number two. What she did was in basket number one, which is absolutely not okay, but what you did was more wrong. This teaches the kids the, un, the concept of what's um, bad, not good, like should not do this, uncomfortable, and what's really bad and what is absolutely nobody ever does things like this okay somebody like this goes to jail so you know like this should never ever 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 happen okay so that there are three levels of things so in their mind they understand okay what my sister did was wrong but that doesn't mean that i should be more wrong now <laughs> here is the trick for you the biggest trick of all of them is in your reactions. When you react to your kids doing something wrong, your reaction should be different when for different baskets. Got it? Now, if you react to basket number one, the yellow basket, with a reaction that's like for number three, then they're gonna get mixed messages as to what's okay and what's not. You know what I'm saying? When your child does something from basket number one, then you need to respond um, accordingly, okay? So, perfect example, okay? You're sitting on the couch reading a magazine and your kid is, <laughs> your, one of your kids is, um, I don't know, pushing the baby over and knocking, hitting his arm or, you know, and you're like, okay, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, and you're reading your magazine and they keep hitting and the baby starts to cry and you're like, oh, stop it, stop it, and you're reading your magazine. But then your child goes into the kitchen 
and um, dumps cookies or cereal all over the floor or, or milk or orange juice and it's nice and sticky. And then you're like, ah, what did you do? And you get hysterical, okay? <laughs> Hitting the baby or your sister is in basket number two. That's not okay. That needs a different reaction than things that are done in basket number one where somebody made a mess or somebody left their room messy. You know, kids like leave rooms messy and especially if siblings share room and one's the clean one and one's the messy one and they don't appreciate it. But this is not a world calamity, okay? This is something you should not do. This is uncomfortable. This is something other people don't appreciate. This is something you should not do to your sibling, <laughs> okay? So when you start to react differently to basket number one, then basket number two, then basket number three, then your kids start to understand what are the different levels of things we should not do. You get what I'm saying? So when your child hits their sibling, it's a totally different seriousness than when they leave their room messy. When your child, if, God forbid somebody would really hurt somebody or do something very serious, um, like, I mean, <laughs> lighting fires in the house. Like, gee, I don't know any kids who do that and I have no idea what you're talking about and I wouldn't at all know this from personal experience. No, not at all. <laughs> um, so when you have a child doing something very seriously dangerous or scary or hurtful, then the level of reaction from you and the consequence that you give them is totally on a different plane than when they do something bad or wrong and when they do something that is not nice or not enjoyable or uncomfortable. You got it? So we have these three baskets, yellow basket, orange basket, and red basket. We could play games with the kids, take out different things from the hat. What would you put this in here? Where would you put this? One time we played this game with my son who is like, um, I'm I think he was six at the time. <laughs> and we, um, I, I often on Sunday nights serve leftovers. So he, we asked him, where would you put serving leftovers? And he was like, basket number three. <laughs> and I was like, really? Is it that bad? <laughs> so understanding when you play this game, you understand where your kids see things, how they relate to um, things that are okay and not okay. Then you can have conversations, open conversations, not when someone's hitting someone, but open conversations in a time where things are more calm to play a game so you understand where your kids are, understand what kind of reactions you need to have to things and where you need to put a bigger consequence than the other. So that is my two cents for you on for this it was an awesome activity for teaching boundaries because it really very it's very concrete and what goes in which basket. And that way, um, depending on whatever's going on with your kids, what activities are happening, what things they need boundaries for, make that very, very concrete. And also once that's concrete for you, then you can sit down and brainstorm, okay, how am I gonna react to the things that are in, in yellow? And how am I gonna react to things in orange? And how, how am I gonna react to things in red? What am I going to do? How, what are my reactions gonna be? What are the consequences going to be? What are we going to do to show our children what's okay and what's not? Because at the end of the day, we want to teach our children to grow up to be law-abiding, good people, right? And some children need more, um, uh, they need stronger boundaries and, and bigger consequences because they like to test the boundaries a lot. But we, st no matter who the child is and how strong-willed they are, they still need to grow up to be good people. So we need to teach this lesson to them. We need to teach them the boundaries and what's okay and what's not. And we just need to work a little harder at it. <laughs> so good luck with that. Hope to see you in the next video. Write me a comment. Let me know what you want to hear in the next video.